We are less than five years away from seeing mammoths back on the planet. Not if it's going to happen, when it's going it to is, happen. It is simply a function of time. I wrote this book, really laying out all of the steps that one would need to overcome. Um, if one were to bring a mammoth or some other extinct species back to life. You led the $50 million seed round for a company called Colossal that is focused on de-extinction. They're seeking to restore lost ecosystems and use gene editing to restore the woolly mammoth to the Arctic tundra. You're capturing my imagination by telling me you're going to bring back the woolly mammoth. What are you going to be using the money for at the moment, Ben? Well, our three flagship projects, the Mammoth, the Thylacine, and the Dodo, are all on track. Is there one percent in the back of your mind uh, of where something could go wrong? There will always be some risk in any large moonshot for uh, society. Mammoths are back. Let's freaking go. I've been wanting to talk about the de-extinction movement for some time now, but I hadn't heard any updates in the news lately, and I thought maybe the hype died down and it wasn't going to happen until I saw this tweet on my timeline this morning. Colossal Biosciences raised $200 million at a $10.2 billion post to bring back animals from extinction. They're on track for a woolly mammoth calf in 2028. Holy smokes. And when I read that, I had so many questions. How is this possible? Is this 2028 date legit? Why is Colossal doing this? And what in the world are we gonna do with these mammoths once they're back on earth? Who are the secret billionaires funding this project? And how does Colossal make money? Well, I found all the answers. Let's dive in. So here is Colossal's chief science officer explaining how they're gonna bring back the woolly mammoth. An Asian elephant is the closest living relative of a mammoth. We collect mammoth DNA, collect a bunch of Asian elephant genomes, line them up against the mammoth genomes. Then we use the tools of genome editing to gradually tweak those Asian elephant cells growing in a dish in a lab to be more mammoth-like. Then we have our mammothized Asian elephant cells in a dish in a lab. Then we use somatic cell nuclear transfer, a process commonly known as cloning, to transform those cells into an embryo. And then we implant that embryo into a surrogate maternal host. That embryo develops and builds into a beautiful, wonderful little mammothized Asian elephant. And it is born and it looks and acts like a mammoth and it lives happily ever after. So they're gonna force an Asian elephant to give birth to a woolly mammoth. That sounds quite bizarre. Now this is different than other hybrid species. You may have heard about ligers, which are like half tiger, half lion. This isn't that. This is gonna be virtually 100% pure woolly mammoth. Now when the heck is this freak show gonna take place? We are less than five years away from seeing mammoths back on the planet. Not if it's going to happen, when it's going it is, to happen. It is simply a function of time. And more specifically, the CEO said in this interview that the mammoth will probably be born sometime in 2028. So if all of this is true and all of this is happening, why in the world are these people trying to play God and bring the woolly mammoth back to life after it's already extinct? Look, I'm gonna ask a pointed question roll with me here, but you are a man who's made his name in AI applications that's so hot right now, in space in particular, so hot right now. We're literally seeing, you said you're interested in biodiversity, ultimately in climate, and part of the West Coast is burning. And I'm interested as to why this is the best place to be putting your talents, to be resuscitating mammoths into the world when we can't conserve what's currently living. First of all, I hate questions like this. It's such a dumb question, in my opinion. Like, oh, there's some terrible thing going on in the world, and it truly is terrible what's happening right now, what she spoke about. But because of this current tragedy, we have to stop all other initiatives and efforts to advance the world and push science forward in order to deal with this thing. Like, as a civilization, we can do two things at the same time. They use the same argument when they say, oh, we shouldn't be building rockets to go to space when there's so many problems in the world. Like by that same logic, these people would have told the Europeans, no, 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 don't go out and explore the new world. There's enough problems in Europe as it is. And who knows by how many generations that would have slowed down the process of global innovation. Just ridiculous. When we started the business, there was a trend line that was terrifying. That was, we were gonna lose up to 15, 1-5% of all biodiversity between now and 2050. Fast forward a few years, that's been reforecasted by external scientists to 50%. 
5-0. We are going to potentially lose up to 50% of all biodiversity between now and 2050. And so we know that modern conservation works, but it doesn't work at the speed at which we are eradicating species and changing the climate and changing the, and changing the planet. So we need new tools against the fight of loss of biodiversity. And so I view it as we need a de-extinction toolkit. It'd be better to have a de-extinction toolkit and not need it than need a de-extinction toolkit and not have it. I love that response. And I agree with that wholeheartedly. All right, so we're in a world now where mammoths are gonna be here. What are they gonna do with these mammoths once they are back on earth? So they got a ton of info on their website and here's what I was able to find. So woolly mammoths used to live in the Arctic tundra. They also refer to it here as the mammoth steppe. The loss of these large cold tolerant mammoths over the past 10,000 years has stripped this ecosystem of the grasslands that once efficiently absorbed carbon. Instead, they are mossy forests and wetlands, which aren't as helpful with combating rising temperatures. However, if the mammoth steppe ecosystem could be revived, it could help in reversing the rapid warming of the climate and more pressingly, protect the Arctic's permafrost, one of the world's largest carbon reservoirs. So the idea is basically just throw them out there into where they used to be and they'll actually improve the planet and help make ecosystems better. Look, I, I want to believe that. I don't know enough to believe that, but I want to believe it's true. It sounds great. Now, what caught my eye with this story was the $200 million in investment that went to Colossal. Who are these billionaires that are funding the mammoth returning? Now, it's a big investment group, but one of the more interesting investors is Thomas Toll. I first heard about him on this podcast called My First Million. And long story short, this guy made all his money by bringing advanced data analytics money ball strategy to the film funding and producing business. Some of the hit movies that he's helped fund and co-produce include The Dark Knight, Godzilla, The Hangover, and hmm, Jurassic World. Interesting. You led the $50 million seed round for a company called Colossal that is focused on de-extinction. Uh, this is funny relative to our connection uh, and conversation about Jurassic World. Like uh, you're capturing my imagination by telling me you're going to bring back the woolly mammoth. I'm was more interested in an investor in the things that they're working through around understanding genes in a more in proteins and CRISPR and all these other things. And I also know his and his team's ethics in terms of where the lines are. People in other countries that you know, may not have the same process, may not have the same checks and balances, are doing this and pursuing this regardless. At least I felt like with, with George and Ben and their teams, they're also very responsible people. You know, if what he's saying is true here, that this type of research, this type of scientific advancement is going to happen either way, and you'd rather have it happen with the people who are the most ethical, if that's the case, I'm on board with that logic. But when a group of people give you $200 million, you got to go out and make money. So how is Colossal making money? Are they just going to charge people like me? I've got my tropical shirt on. I'm ready to go to an island and spend $10,000 to look at a mammoth or look at a cyber-toothed tiger or the dodo bird. Not quite. That's not quite the plan. So here are the main ways they're planning on making money or already making money. Now, they've been working on this artificial womb technology to bring these animals back to life, and they can use that same technology to help preserve other species that may have trouble with breeding and fertility. And they can sell that to different organizations and governments around the world. They also seem to have this preservation as a service where they're just going to do a bunch of stuff to help keep animals from becoming extinct. I can't quite tell. They've also spun off two companies already. This company called Breaker, which helps break down plastics and Form Bio, a computational biology platform. I don't know what that is, but it sounds pretty interesting. And the last way is this biodiversity credits that they want to sell. So the thought here is that if they bring back the woolly mammoth and they make all of these great improvements to the climate as a result, they would quantify that, get that certified and sell that off as biodiversity credits. So then if you in your own country, somewhere in a different part of the world, go out and ruin the environment for some reason, you can buy these biodiversity credits from Colossal who helped preserve and improve the climate. And then somehow net net, you made up for all of the ways you harmed the planet in your own neighborhood. Now, I love what Colossal is doing, and I love that they're trying to bring back the woolly mammoth. And I love that I live in a time and place where people are willing to take big swings to try and make the world we all live in a better place. Like I always say, we're born too late to explore the world, 
born too early to explore the universe, but born just in time to browse dank memes. Or apparently, born just in time to witness the de-extinction of the woolly mammoth. 